So we've got a vessel here that's been chartered through the Military Sea Lift Command, uh, bringing just over a thousand pieces uh, of a BCT, which rep represents about one third. Uh, this is the first of four vessels that we'll be bringing in, uh, delivering readiness and lethality to the warfighter uh, to again ensure a strong Europe. All right, what else? What happens once the equipment is downloaded? You guys, SCBC owns everything on the port, right? Absolutely. So tell us what happens after offload is complete. Okay. So uh, it, we generally take about uh, 350 pieces we can discharge within a 12-hour period. We've got 1,000. We're a little bit ahead of schedules. So we anticipate being able to be done with this in about 36 hours. Uh, once we get the, the vessel discharged, we'll place this into various locations within the yard, uh, divided into four different onward movement modes. We've got uh, barge operations, line haul operations, uh, rail, of course, for some of our heavier pieces of equipment, and convoy. That's four things going that'll be going simultaneous to the discharge of all of our vessels. Uh, that's a plan that's placed in, uh, into operation by the 21st TSC, has come up with an excellent onward movement plan. Uh, we assist them in, in getting the, the uh, marshalling area set to facilitate those operations. And again, we'll be doing those simultaneous ship discharge, onward movement of line haul, onward movement of rail, onward movement of barge, both uh, roll on, roll off, and load on, load off, as well as convoy operations that will be executed by the uh, brigade combat team. And, uh So when, uh, when the vessel discharges any piece of equipment, it goes into to our tally point. And we've got redundant means of recording the data from each. So we have military shipping labels that are attached to each piece of equipment, in which case we scan with, uh, with our handheld terminal integration technology to record the, the uh, VIN number, of, or excuse me, the scan number of each one of our, our MSLs. We also have a, of a, an operational uh, tally, basically our analog. So we'll have one that's analog, one that's digital through the HHTI, record all of that data so that we can ensure that uh, everything we have lined up within the, the uh, marshalling yard as far as the, the, the four onward movement modes is lined up and that tally happen, that happens at the tally point. Uh, this is not the only show in Europe right now because you are about to bring in First Cab. Talk about how spread out uh, service deployment distribution command is. Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command is, is uh, spread out all throughout Europe. So in Europe, we're dedicated with the 598th Transportation Brigade, uh, with, commanded by my commander, uh, Colonel Jin Pak, and we have two subordinate uh, SDDC battalions, A38, which I command, and A38, uh, which, was, which is uh, out of Italy, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel John Hotek. Uh, right now, Atlantic Resolve is, is currently receiving two brigades in, one infantry brigade, a heavy infantry brigade and one uh, combat aviation brigade, as well as deploying to home station one infantry brigade and one combat aviation brigade. Uh, most SDDC battalions can, can run uh, mainly one op, possibly two. Uh, we're running three brigade level operations at this time simultaneously, as uh, obviously we're here in Antwerp bringing in 1-1 uh, Infantry Division ABCT, Armored Brigade Combat Team. We'll be bringing in First, first ID Combat Aviation Brigade in Zeebrugge, about an hour south of here, as well as deploying to home station 1st uh, first Brigade, first, brigade uh, first Cavalry Division uh, through Bremerhaven. Uh, we'll have an operation going to de redeploy, excuse me, deploy to home station 4th Combat Aviation Brigade out of both Rotterdam and Thessaloniki, Greece, and that'll be led by 839th Trans Battalion out of Italy. Uh, anything else you want to add about the great things that SD Well, the biggest thing we have right now is, is uh, to be able to meet the requirements of, of uh, running multiple brigade level ops at, at multiple ports simultaneously. One of our good news stories is total force integration. So we've got uh, 40 reservists out of Texas from the 461st um, Expeditionary Terminal Operating Element that are attached to me to help facilitate these operations. So what we have out here really is our go-to-war team. This is our team of teams comprised of 598th, 838th, we've got elements of 21st TSC, 386 MCT out of Vicenza, Italy, the 461st ITO that's uh, you know attached to us out of Texas. We've got our, our commercial partners here at ICO Terminal in Antwerp, the shipping companies ARC, Central Gulf Lines, as well as others, and of course our, our wonderful partners in the Belgian military. All of this is coming together into, again, one team of teams to be able to facilitate these operations, not only here in Antwerp, but in Zeebrugge and Bremerhaven and Rotterdam as well. 
this the four time yeah this is yeah this is our fourth iteration of this so you know we, we started with third brigade about two years ago this is our fourth brigade uh, second time at Antwerp and so it's really it's different although it's very cold it's as cold as it was the first time um, we're much more proficient at this uh, you know tanks are rolling off the uh, the team of teams if you would the transporters meeting up with the railhead with the barge site so um, much more uh, smooth operation this time so talk about integrating with the Belgian, in this case, the Belgians. Yeah, so here, uh, a lot of work with the Belgian Ministry of Defense. And so this is the, is the Belgian port, and their uh, their army's guarding it for us. So um, from from putting salt down to the gendarmerie guarding the port to the uh, the container wall that you'll see uh, that's, that's surrounding the port, it's a fantastic operation. Um, so let's talk about logistics. Why is it important? We're talking about... 3,000 plus troops, 3,000 plus equipment. So why is that important to be able to pull this off from a logistics standpoint? We're moving from here, we're moving these brigades uh, via barge, via rail, via convoy to intermediate staging bases in Poland. This is their training bases. They'll go there, they'll perform gunnery, um, become, if you would, integrated. Uh, we call them ready to fight, and then they'll move on to do their training tasks for the next nine months. So how, is this, how have we improved fourth time so every time we do this we add a level of complexity so when third brigade came in two years ago we put them on trains and sent that entire brigade to Poland they downloaded and they and they became ready to fight after they had done gunnery and some other training tasks this time um, we're bringing in first brigade there's a railhead we're gonna load some trains we've got two barge sites we're gonna load 11 barges uh, and move them to other railheads in Germany so that they can do multimodal so we're gonna go from sea to river, to rail, to Poland. And so it's a level of complexity um, that we're, we're, we want to make it more complex every time uh, so we get better at it. Multimodal, why is that important to have multimodal transportation? You know, when you put everything on a train or you put everything in a convoy and you move it, um, it becomes a uh, it's, it's single point of failure. So what we want to do is flatten out the risk. So this time we've got convoys. And it's the second time we're convoying across Europe. We've got the rail. Uh, and then we're doing, a, 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 again, 11 barges. And we're not just moving containerized cargo or Humvees. Uh, this time we're moving tanks and Bradleys via barge. Um, what does it say about strong Europe uh, moving these armored brigade combat teams throughout uh, Europe? I, and I appreciate that question. So, so you know, um, this is, a, this is a, when I was a young captain in Europe, there was always a brigade moving. We were moving divisions. We had reforger. And those, those times stopped. So it was about a 20-year gap, a 25-year gap uh, between moving armor brigades and moving armor around Europe. Um, and so it's good to get back into the habit. We hadn't used Antwerp for 25 years to move armor. This is the second time we've done it in a year. Um, it just gets us back into those old habits of, of being able to, uh, to fight on the European continent. How does it make you feel seeing all these teams coming together, not just Team 21, but you got SDDC and all these? Uh, you, you know, know and, and we were talking earlier, this is a team of teams. Uh, you know, the 21st TSE, we do this for United States Army Europe. Um, so we're the execution wing uh, of the United States Army Europe. We've got 21st TSE soldiers here. We've got uh, 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 local nationals who are doing maintenance. We've got the, uh, the SDDC brigade that's working the movement control and downloading the ship. We've got the Bundesrail. Uh, uh, moving vehicles in. We've got uh, uh, barge contractors doing this. So it is literally a team of teams um, all coming together to do one task inside this area that's about the size of about two football fields. Um, all right, so barge operations. Uh, explain barge operations in a summarized nutshell for us. What's taking place with that? So what you're going to have is as some of the portion of the vessel uh, gets offloaded, it's going to go behind you to a barge site and we're going to load 11 barges and move that cargo down the Rhine River uh, to three separate barge sites and, and use the railheads there. So we don't want to, we're really flattening the risk of just using one railhead. Um, we're going to go to four separate railheads to move this brigade. So uh, what role exactly do the barges play in this whole operation? What role do the barges yes, play? Yes, in, in the bigger picture of the movement. As we do this multiple times, you know, we see risk in, in just having just three or four railheads, major railheads in, in, in the Benelux countries. So what we've done is chosen to use barges to bring some of this cargo into Germany and use the railhead at Mannheim and Duisburg to flatten out the risk. 
Talk about, from what I understand, tanks are going to be rolling down the Rhine River on a barge. That's pretty unique, right? It's been a long time since we've, we've had armored uh, uh, armor on the uh, Rhine River. So it's probably been since the last reforger exercise where we moved tanks and Bradleys um, on the Rhine River. We're going to do it for the first time uh, in, a, in a couple of decades. Move them from here uh, down to a barge site in Germany, offload, upload the trains at that same site, and move them into their uh, intermediate staging bases in uh, Poland. Uh, is there anything else you want to add about the whole operation? No, this is just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's 6 in the morning on the 20th of January. It's freezing cold here right now. You've got several hundred soldiers and civilians all floating this vessel behind me, and it's working like clockwork uh, because of the team because of the team effort that everybody's putting forward, so I appreciate it. First of all, I'd like to say this is my first time here, and this is a complex operation that I could see already and barely see it because it's still dark outside, but uh, truly impressed with the, the really a team of teams that's come together to actually put this thing together. For Strong Europe, I mean, this is what it's all about. Uh, this is bringing the team in here, bringing this kind of combat capability in to integrate with our allies and partners here in Europe is what it's all about. It is our contribution to everything that we do in terms of providing security, uh, you know, inside of the continent of Europe. Talk about our allies. When all is said and done, we're going across three countries, Belgium, Germany, and Poland. Why is it important to have our allies in an operation like this? Well. I mean, obviously, we don't do anything nowadays without our allies and partners, and uh, we have to have them connected with us, you know, every step of the way. And it starts right here with port operations, and as we move from here through Germany and into Poland to, you know, start getting after training and building combat readiness, you, we're going to do it uh, with them each step of the way. Is there anything else you want to add about how uh, this? This demonstrates uh, deterrence or anything like that? Uh, well, there, there's no doubt about it. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of reasons we're here in Europe, and one of one of the main reasons is to actually kind of deter and, you know, be postured for, you know, anything that may actually come. So in terms of deterrence, this is a absolutely huge deterrent when you can actually watch the tanks just rolling off the ship one after another, ready to get after building combat readiness. The speed of assembly certainly helps us uh, show our ready to fight posture uh, and our ability to mass forces uh, on the objective uh, is certainly a deterrent. Uh, but it's also important that we do that safe. Uh, so we can't outpace safety uh, as we do our speed of assembly, uh, but we are exercising. We exercised it last year. We're exercising this port again. And every time we get a rep, we develop that connective tissue and that muscle memory. Uh, we do it faster and we do it safer.